And for 2012, the theme for our church is going to be God first. Yes, sir. God first. Amen. So we're going to learn how to put God first in our lives, God first in the family, God first in the marriage, God first in everything. Amen. 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 And I have my first message of 2012 that I'm going to preach in 2011, if you don't mind. <laughs> and um, and uh, so this is my first message, and I'm going to uh, share this message tomorrow in Ganawagi. And we'll have Pastor Jordan here in the morning. I'm going to be there with uh, our second campus, and I'll share this message there. It's going to be my first message of the year and I was so excited as I was writing the message and I thought well I need to share it tonight also <laughs> all right uh, I don't have any presentations so just you just bear bear with me and I want to read from the book of Matthew and uh, the title of the, this message is it's make the best use of your time make the best use of your time and Matthew 6 33 says but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So what do we need to seek first? His kingdom. His kingdom. Okay, so uh, in order to seek his kingdom, we need to seek him. Amen. Because it's not something made and uh, the question is, how are your priorities organized? What are you seeking first? Is it money first? Is it kids first? Hobbies first? Family first? Well, I guess because you're here in New Year's Eve, you're seeking God first. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, churches and preachers, maybe they, they told you in the past that if you don't put God first, you might be in sin. But I want to tell you that nowhere in the Bible it, it, it says that if you don't put God first, you are, you are in sin. It doesn't say this. Uh, and this is a relief. Okay, because sometimes you don't put God first, it's not a sin. So I guess this is good news, but I have bad news for you. It's, if you don't put God first, you might be putting yourself under a curse. So uh, I, I've seen a lot of people, they're Christians, they love God, they come to church, they don't put God first. So they're, they're, they're living a, a godly life, but because God is not first, there's a number of different things and uh, situations that happen in their lives that, that are a curse. And, and uh, maybe we should consider to correct a thing or two in the way we organize uh, our, our time. Uh, I, I read about uh, William Hinson. He, he tells us about uh, animal trainers, and I read this in a John Maxwell book, uh, where he mentioned that, that uh, men that train lions, they use a stool and, uh, and they put the, the stool in front of the, of the animal, when the animal attacks. And he says that's the most important tool for the trainer. Uh, and, uh, and people think, why a stool? Because a stool has four legs. And when the animal uh, tries to react and attack the trainer, gets distracted with the four legs. If it was just a, a, you know, a stick, a, a pole or something, he'll be able to focus the attention in, in one thing. But because there's four different points, uh, the, the, the young lions are not able to, to react and, uh, and they become disabled because the attention is fragmented. And, and so they, they, they're distracted with these four different things. And, uh, and John Maxwell was sharing this about priorities and I found it so interesting because so many times we have different things in our life. You know, we worry because of a health problem and we worry because of our child and we worry because uh, our husband, uh, uh, he's going through a hard time and we, we worry with three, four, five different things and we have our attention divided. And besides that, we still want to put God first, but we have all these other things that are happening in our lives. I don't know if this, this ever happened to you. I guess it happens to everybody. And uh, lack of priorities will always fragment our life and we may end up wasting time instead of enjoying the best that God has for us. 
And I, I'd like to, to read a, a, a scripture from the book of Psalms. In Psalm 39, 4, it says, Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. Show me the numbers of my, the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is our life. And then Psalm 90, verse 10, it says, Also, the length of, of your days is 70 years or 80. If we have the strength, then quickly pass and we fly away. So, so we have, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, there's a passage in the Bible that says that the limit of our years would be 120, but then we have the, the book of Psalms that says 70 or 80, and we know it's about right. You know, some people will go 90 or 100, some will go younger, so in average, it's what the Bible says. So, so we need to understand that our time on earth is very limited, and some, some of us are getting closer to the limit. Some of you are closer than me, <laughs> and uh, that doesn't make me specially glad, but that's just the reality of things. And uh, I realize that for some of you, uh, 70, 70 or, year, or 80 years is not much. I remember when I was uh, uh, a teenager, I thought that 40 was old. <laughs> People say, 40 years? How old are you, 40? Oh, you're old. 40, you're old. <laughs> And uh, I thought anyone over 40 was an ancient, but uh, that, that's very rarely, you know. Uh, and um, uh, for example, for teenagers, it, it, when teenagers are, are in love, they spend an hour uh, talking, and it seems like it's a blink of an eye. Uh, but uh, but uh, if mom and dad spend an hour worrying about them, it seems like an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> we're worried about them. So it's very relative, but so but time is limited. And because it's limited, we need to make the best use of our time. Uh, there's a scripture in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 15 and, uh, to 17. It says, look carefully then how you walk, not as un unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, so here again on verse 16, Ephesians 5, 16, it says, Make the best use of the time, because the days in which we live are evil. And they were evil at the time uh, of Paul when he wrote these things, and they're evil now. So uh, I'm sure that you've noticed, uh, also as, as we arrive to the end of the year, uh, I, didn't, I didn't watch much TV or read many magazines, but they always have these art articles with predictions. And for 2012, they talk a lot about the, the Mayan calendar that gets to the end. And they say it's the end of the world in the December 21st. <laughs> Do you believe it? No. no. I don't believe it, but if it's the end of the world, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> but people are going to talk a lot about these things. And uh, uh, I, as I was uh, uh, also reading an article, that they were saying that in 1967, Experts predicted that by the turn of the century, that was the year 2000, with technology, uh, the average American will work 22 hours a week. <laughs> and that we will work only 27 weeks in a year. That's what they predicted. Because they said, oh, they're doing these uh, robots and all these things. So by the year 2000, people will work just 22 hours a week and 27 weeks of the year. The I guess they failed. The same salary? <laughs> I guess they, they failed the, the prediction. And, um, you, you know, when they do predictions, there's, there's always a few that are right on. And then they say, oh, this is the man that predicted the Twin Towers. This is the one that predicted the earthquake in Japan. Because, you know, if I predict a hundred things and one, <laughs> and I, one comes up to, to, to happen, then people say, oh, look at uh, this fellow, he, he really knows what's going on. But everything is in God's hand, and uh, most of us, I think, we, we seem to be busy, and we are here, it's the, the last day of 2011, and the first day of 2012, and I wonder how we'll do this year. I don't know if you're very busy, if you're uh, just worried with uh, three or four things like the lion, and you're not focusing in, in one thing, uh, or, uh, you know, when we get to the end of the, these 365 days uh, in one year from now, what will we achieve? 
So it's, it's very important for us to have these pauses in, in, in life and, and evaluate where we are. And uh, to me, the, you know, the New Year resolutions don't work very well. I don't know about you, <laughs> but uh, I, sometimes I do a New Year resolution and say, oh, this year I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then three weeks later, I failed. <laughs> Uh, it's just me. I, I know you folks have this. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, but we do all of these resolutions, all these things, and there's different traditions, and people have different traditions. I have the tradition of spending New Year's Eve at the church, and uh, this was going to be the first year that I, I wouldn't, <laughs> and I'm so glad that, that we're here. And, um, you know, in order to make use of time, we need to make effective transformations. And uh, I'm going to read just a, a short paragraph of a, a, also of a book uh, that I was reading. And I, I thought this was so interesting that I, I want to read it to you. And it's, the title is, Three Dollars Worth of God, Please. Three Dollars Worth of God, Please. And uh, this is written by Tim Hansel. And he says, When I relax, I feel guilty. Uh, and... Um, he says, I would like to buy three dollars worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep, but just enough to equal a cup of warm milk or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of him to make me love a black man or pick beats with a migrant. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want the warmth of the wound, not the new birth. I want a pound of the eternal in a paper sack. I would like to buy three dollars worth of God, please. That's sad, eh? <laughs> but, but for some people, even for some Christians, it's what they want. And, and uh, the reason why we have more people sometimes coming to, to church, it, it's, it's because it, you know, they, they know if they commit, they need to, to have changes in their lives. And so that they start thinking, well, if I start going to church, then people are not going to accept that I, I live in common law with, uh, with this woman. I'm not married. So if I start going to church, I need to get married. Or they think, well, if I'm going to church, I need to stop my drinking habits. Or if I, I'm going to church, you know, I, I just want three dollars worth of God, please. I just want, you know, Sunday, it's okay. You know, I, I'll come to church on Sunday. But pastor, please don't ask me to do anything. Because if you ask me to do anything, I'll move to another church. Because, you know, I just want three dollars of God, please, on a paper bag to go. <laughs> I don't know if this makes sense to you, but if we'll be totally honest, the idea of transformation really scares us. And that because we know that a radical change is uncomfortable. We realize that with transformation, we will arrive also face to face with the problems of, uh, of our life. And the two greatest enemies of transformation are regrets for the things we did in the past and anxiety for what will happen in the future. So that, that, that doesn't seem to make sense, but it's the reality. People don't want transformation. In fact, many of us are engaging in the game of I wish it were or I wish we're, if it's next week, or I wish if it were next month, or some such things like uh, kids go to school and they say, boy, I wish this day was over. I, I, I know you don't say these things. Just kids when they go to school. To school. Oh, I wish this day was over. Enjoy your day. <laughs> you know, th there was a story about a girl that went to college and hated college. But she told herself, if I can ever get out of college and get married, I have children, I know I'll finally be able to enjoy life. So she stuck with it and she went to classes every day, graduated from college, then she got married and had children, discovered that children are a lot of work. So she told herself, if I can just get these kids raised, then I'll be able to relax and really enjoy life. <laughs> But about the time the kids were entering high school, her husband said, guess what? We don't have enough money to send our kids to college. I guess you have to, you, you, you need to get a job. 
She didn't want him to get a job, but she knew he, he was right, they needed the money, so she went into work and she hated work. But, but she told herself, if I can just get these kids out of college and get all the bills paid, then I can quit work and enjoy life. Finally, the last child graduated from college, all the bills were paid, so she walked into the employer's office and said, I quit. And he said, oh, you don't want to quit now. If you stay with us just another eight years, you'll have a pension for the rest of your life. <laughs> she thought, ah, I don't want to work another eight years, but there's all that money there. I really can turn down the opportunity. So she worked for another eight years. And finally, she and her husband retired. At the same time, they sold their home. They bought a little cottage. They sat down and had a happy new year. I just wish that you'll be able to organize your time perfectly. And my prayer is, Lord, help me to use the 8,760 hours of this day in <laughs> uh, the wisest way that, that I can do. Amen? Amen? So in the next year, I just want to have enough. I want to have enough happiness to keep you sweet, enough trials to keep you strong, enough sorrow to keep you human, enough hope to keep you happy, enough failure to keep you humble, enough success to keep you eager, enough friends to give you comfort, enough wealth to meet your needs, enough enthusiasm to make you look forward to tomorrow, and enough determination to make each day better, better than the day for. So that's my prayer and the Bible verse Matthew 6 13 but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these these things will be added unto you. Amen. Make good use of your time. Amen. Amen. <laughs>